How great should be our astonishment if we saw a king become a worm, crawling along the earth, living in a filthy hole, and then making laws, appointing ministers and governing his kingdom. O holy faith, unfold to us who Jesus Christ is, who this man is who appears as insignificant as the rest of men. St. John assures us that he is the eternal word, the only begotten of God. And what sort of life has this man-God led on earth? Behold it described by the prophet Isaiah. And we have seen him, despised and most abject of men, a man of sorrows. He wished to be a man of sorrows. That is, he wished to be afflicted with all sorrows and not to be for a moment free from pain. He was a man of sorrows and loaded with insults. Yes, for Jesus was the most insulted and maltreated of all mortals, as if he had been the last and most contemptible of men, a God bound as a malefactor by the officers of justice, a God scourged as a slave, a God treated as a mock king, a God dying on an infamous gibbet. But why do so many Christians behold with indifference Jesus on the cross? During Holy Week, they are present at the celebration of his death, but without sentiments of tenderness or gratitude, as if they commemorated an event which never happened or which does not concern them. Perhaps they neither know nor believe what the Gospels relate of the passion of Jesus Christ. I answer and say that they know it and believe it, but they do not reflect on it. For those who believe and reflect on the passion of the Redeemer, it is impossible not to burn with love for a God who suffers such torments and dies for the love of them. When thinking on the passion of our Lord, we should consider not so much the sorrows and insults which he suffered as the love with which he bore them. For Jesus Christ wished to submit to such torments, not only to save us, since for our salvation a single petition offered by him to his Father would be sufficient, but also to make us understand the affection which he entertained for us, and thus gain our hearts. A soul that thinks of this love of Jesus Christ cannot but love him. It will feel itself bound and constrained, as it were, by force to concentrate all his affections to him. O oh, happy you, O oh, loving souls who frequently meditate on the passion of Jesus! You shall, says Isaiah, draw waters with joy out of the Saviour's fountains. From the blessed fountains of the wounds of the Saviour, you shall continually draw waters of love and confidence. And how can even the greatest sinner, if he repent of his sins, ever despair of the divine mercy at the sight of Jesus crucified, when he knows that the Eternal Father has placed on his beloved Son all our sins that he might atone for them? How, says St. Paul, can we be afraid that God will refuse us any grace after having given us his own Son? <laughs>